We have just passed and or are passing the 50th anniversary of the most important transitional moment in our culture and society, the invention of the pill. In 1999, Economics Magazine uh, said it was the most important scientific advance of the 20th century. As Nancy Gibbs says in her Time Magazine article, there is no such thing as the car, the shoe, or the laundry soap, but everyone knows the pill. When it arrived on the market in 1966, the controversy over its implications for society was enormous and instantaneous. Some believed it would lead to sexual anarchy. The Catholic Church was in an uproar. Should practicing Catholics be allowed to use the pill to prevent pregnancy? The Pope eventually said no, but its use gradually increased to the point where millions of women were taking it. By 1965, close to 5 million used the pill on a daily basis. There were many strong arguments in favor of it. It radically reduced the number of abortions. It limited the cases of teenage pregnancy and allowed first thousands, then millions of women, to both finish their educations uh, through graduate school and enter the job market. The pivotal legislation called Title IX greatly enhanced the opportunities that countless women uh, were now free to seek. Enacted in 1972, it essentially ended discrimination of every kind in education. As Ms. Gibbs puts it, the doors of college, law schools, medical schools, and business schools were thrown open to admit women. In just the past year, we have seen women become the majority of the workforce. The pill was part of this cataclysmic change in our society, and its influence continues today. It makes one wonder what the next big thing will be in our society. What are scientists working on today that will uh, change the lives we live, uh, perhaps forever. But the real issue in the end is about the strength of our society's most important institution, the family. And marriage and children must necessarily be included in that discussion. Our society and our culture will only be as strong as the families we create, and the children who are raised in those families are the most important part of any discussion about America's future. My hope is that the children born to this country and this world will be wanted, loved, and cared for in the way they deserve to be. That is the most important thing.